Paul Lockwell, who said in his book, The Alchemist, when a person truly desires something in life, the whole universe conspires in order to help that person achieve it. Without going any further, I'd like to give honor to this distinguished audience before me. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sadiq Sant Nambata. I'm a student of Nigerian Turkish International Colleges, Abuja. I'm 16 years old, and I'm from Kano State. I come from a family of eight, five sisters, two brothers. I'm not the son of an extremely wealthy man or a power seat holder. I am the, I am the proud son of an ordinary hardworking man, and God knows I am content. But honestly, I'll be a fool not to aspire more out of life. After all, I am only human. I first heard about the TED or the TED program from my older sister when she showed me a video of Lupita Nyong'o. She didn't only speak on beauty, she redefined the entire concept of beauty. Since from then, I, had ha I have had a silent dream, or let me say, a quiet dream to speak at a TED conference, or even to participate. Being an audience, it did not matter. Just to be there was an accomplishment on its own. And it was just till a couple of weeks ago when I lived the reality of Paulo Coelho's statement as the universe has brought me here today to speak before you. It was honestly after a chemistry examination, the examination was not easy. It was tough and I came out, I wasn't sure whether I was completely in my right senses. And we went to a brief elimination, to a brief elimination examination or we, both, we all spoke. I was put against many experienced speakers from our school and I emerged victorious. At that time, I wasn't sure what was happening. It was after I put my body and soul together, I went back to ask, please, who exactly qualified and what is going to happen? So the, the topic or the theme of today's events, determination, drive, and discipline, is a very broad topic. But I'll only take a little of your time to speak on it today. We're all aware, and the concept is not strange to us, it's not alien. We're all familiar with the concepts. Determination is when a person strives or struggles to do, to do something, no matter how difficult the situation gets. Drive can be defined as when someone pushes himself or pushes something to make progress. While discipline, which is the last but definitely not the least, is when a person trains his mind, his body, and himself in general to do things in the right way and, in the right, and at the right time. I watched a documentary on mountain climbing a couple of weeks ago. And what I noticed about mountain climbing was it wasn't an easy task at all. I know it sounds fun, it sounds interesting, but from the changes in temperature, the pressure, the difficulty of climbing, the in total, it's a, it's a completely arduous task. But what surprised me the most was when they got down from that mountain, I expected them to run away from the task as fast as they could. But they just rested a bit and went back up. A pure show of determination, a pure show of drive, a pure show of discipline. We're all aware that among the greatest instincts of the human being is survival. And naturally, we're all scared of oblivion. Nobody wants to leave this world without a chase. I personally don't want to die, and tomorrow when they are speaking of me or when they, are, or when they look at my epitaph, it will simply read, here lies Sadiq, he lived and he died. <laughs> That's not a life. It's, barely, it's even barely an existence for me. So I would like to leave a legacy, a name, or a footprint in the sands of time. It's what every individual wants. Nobody wants to die and vanish without a trace. We all want to be known for something. We all want to be mentioned by individuals and generations to come in the future. We have seen great examples in history. Let's take Thomas Edison, for example. The light bulb we're enjoying here was his invention. He suffered and he tried several times to invent this. He was, laugh he was laughed at, he was insulted, he was criticized. Nothing did, there was nothing they did not say to spite him, but he still kept on going. And when he finally succeeded, he said to all these people, I did not fail several times. It only took me all this while to perfect my invention. And after perfecting it, I managed to find several ways or several mistakes you can make when inventing this light bulb, and it all shut them up. Nobody had the mouth to speak or say anything about Thomas Edison after that. Let's not go too far from our continent, Africa. We're all aware of Nelson Mandela, the Nate Nelson Mandela, the former president of South Africa. He struggled in his lifetime to free his people from apartheid rule. He struggled, he fought, he was tortured, he was tormented, even went through prison. But after he succeeded and he freed the people of South Africa, today you can't speak of Africa in general, not just South Africa without mentioning Nelson Mandela. When you achieve, there's this joy and there's this satisfaction you get from it. You cannot come to a certain concept without mentioning these people. Let's go to physics, for example. You can't teach physics in a secondary school without speaking of Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein, all those people that have achieved, made their laws, made their ideas public. You can't come and speak of our great nation, Nigeria, without mentioning our nationalists. Dr. Namdi Azikiwe, Chief Obafemi Awolowo. You can't speak without Sir Bakar Tafawa Balewa, Herbert Macaulay. 
These men have made it, and that's why we're here today as Nigerians and proud Nigerians at that. Also, you can't go into a public and start discussing music without somebody bringing up Michael Jackson. And we all know in this crowd that the late, that the late Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream for America because he was determined and this dream has come to pass. Also, when we move ahead with our determination and drive, we go ahead to make great feats and we go ahead to put our names down in history that will not be forgotten. If a person is determined enough and if a person is driven enough and has his discipline as his moral compass, it will always push him in the right direction. Most people, they shy away from this idea of determination. They think, oh, it's too difficult. Honestly, to be determined and to work for something you believe in is not a joke. It takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of struggle on your part. So most people shy away from this responsibility because it's not something that they can take lightly. They find excuses. Wow, well, humans, it's always very easy to find an excuse to dodge something we don't want to do. Some will say, ah, if something is meant to happen to me, it's going to come on its own. After all, it's destiny, it's God that is writing everything, it's going to come to us. This led a philosopher by the name Hamas to make this statement. Religion is the opium of the people. People depend on religion when they come and try to dodge something. But they simply forget that another great philosopher, Socrates, once said, this opus, this populi, the voice of the people is the voice of God. When a man struggles and pushes himself forward to achieve something, God supports him and backs him and allows him to achieve that feat easily. And this goes back to support Paulo Coelho when he said, the universe conspires to push that person or to help that person achieve his dreams and achieve his ambitions. Also, when we move ahead to achieve greatness in this world, people want to align themselves with successful people. There's nobody that won't want to say that he has rubbed shoulders with such a person or he has met so, so, so person. I can live here today and go back to my school and boast proudly that I had met great people in this hall today and nobody will rival me on that. I can feel proud of myself for that. For this reason, several people try to align themselves with successful people all around the world today. Don't be surprised to find a Nigerian dropping his identity completely and prefers to refer to himself as the cousin of the grandson of Enamdi Azikiwe simply because this man has done it and he has been great in his lifetime. They just want to attach that name to themselves because of he has left that identity, that footprint in the sands of time that people will forever look back on and will appreciate him for his efforts. Apart from just the efforts of other people, when the effort is yours, it's always even better. If you work for something for yourself, it means more and it matters more to you than the effort of other people. Let's give an example of a furniture company in America called IKEA. This furniture company simply provides you with parts, spare parts for you to compile and form your furniture by yourself. Many of their patronizers have claimed that they attach more value to these products than to products that they buy ready-made from, from other companies. Let me give a more practical example. Most people in this place are parents. Parents are driven and determined by their children. Children are also determined or driven by their parents. It might not always be straightforward. Sometimes the parents can tell you, if you don't pass this examination, you won't eat in this house today. Or if you don't do this, this will happen. But it's always in the right course, and the content is always correct, and it's always for the best, of, it's always for the best interest of the child. If, God forbid, a person's child was to, be, was to be taken away from him, that person will go against all odds to get his child back because he knows the value of that child or the value of that person to him. But if, for example, a person was just walking through the street and he met a child on the road, they get acquainted, start to discuss a little, exchange ideas, and by coincidence, the child's parents was to show up and say, excuse me, sir, this child here is for sale if you're interested. The person will not attach as much value to that child as he would to a child that he had given birth to. This just shows that when a person is puts his effort and puts his passion into something, he learns to value it more than that which he is given or what he gets from other people. In all the books, all the quotes, all the novels and all the articles I've read, I've never come across a single person that has made it, a single person that has left a legacy or a great name for himself without these qualities, determination, drive, and discipline. In the pamphlets we're all distributed, there was a quote there that said, determination, drive, and discipline are the propelling force to success. You can't make success without having all these three in one individual. I've spoken on this topic for a few minutes now, and I would like to use this opportunity to ask, to ask this audience in front of me to forgive me for any errors I might have made in the course of this speech. And finally, as an ambassador of the youth standing before you today, I would like to plead with the audience or plead with the adult generation. If nothing is to be left as a legacy to the youth of this country, 
as a legacy for the youth, you should leave at least or instill, or instill these characteristics, determination, drive, and discipline. So when the flag of leadership or the mantle of leadership is handed down to us, we can push this country, push the continent, push the world in total to a greater place. And I hope that as I leave this stage today, I will take, and as I leave this stage today, I promise I'll take all the beautiful smiles, the warm reception, and the general kindness of the audience here today. And I hope that you all as well will take this face of mine. Not this ugly one, really, but the beautiful one that Lupita and Yungo described, my inner beauty with you as well in your hearts. Thank you, and God bless you. Amazing. <laughs>